everyone, my name is Katrina Walser from Oliphant Cat and if we haven't met before, I am a knitting teacher and designer based in Sydney in Australia. And today I have a wrap up of everything that I knit in 2021. So, 2021's been a bit of a blur actually. If you live in Australia or you know anything about what the situation in Australia is like, that was just a very odd sort of period in the middle there where we're in lockdown and it was all just a little bit surreal, I think. So I thought that it might be a nice way to end the year by just wrapping up everything that I actually knit this year. And looking back at some of these projects has been really funny because it's just hard to believe that it was just the start of this year that I actually made a lot of these. <laughs> so. It's been interesting. This year was also the first year where I actually decided to be quite thorough about actually tracking all of my projects. So I've been making Ravelry projects for them all and recording the yarn and the start date and the end date and the patterns for all of them. So it's made this wrap up really easy and pretty seamless. So I'm excited to share it all with you. So a couple of quick stats before we get started and dive into the projects themselves. So this year I knit 26 finished objects. There were 21 different patterns, so I did knit some repeats, which is actually a little strange and out of character for me. Usually I only knit things once, but we'll go into that as we get to the repeat projects. Of those 21 patterns, 13 of them were mine and 8 of them were designed by other designers. In terms of yarn, I went through and totaled up all of the yarn that I used which was a little bit of an intimidating number at the end of the day. <laughs> so I knit 14,441 meters of yarn, or that's about 14 kilometers, which in physical terms is a little over the distance from my house to my parents' house, <laughs> which means nothing to any of you, but it's pretty amusing to me. That's how much yarn is actually in all of these finished items. But in terms of how much I actually knit this year, the number is probably a lot higher. So those 13 patterns of mine that I used, the vast majority of them were designs that I actually made this year, and that involves a lot of frogging. So even though there's about 14 kilometers of yarn in all of this, I probably knit a lot more just because I had to undo it and redo it quite a few times. So there are 24 different yarns that I used this year, and they came from 17 different companies, 10 of which were Australian. So I am on a little bit of a mission to try and use as much Australian yarn as I can, mostly to support the local industry. Realistically, I'm never going to get to the point where I only use Aussie yarn because I do actually work with a lot of international companies for my actual job. But I think a little over half of the yarns being Australian is a pretty good, pretty good stat. Not a bad job. I'll try and do a little bit better next year. As always, all of the links to all the patterns in the yarn will be down in the description box below. Okay, so those are all the steps on the patterns in the yarn, so I will walk you through all of the actual projects. So the first batch of projects that I have to show you need a little bit of an introduction. So my journey as a designer has been an interesting one. I started my company in early 2020, and so I spent all of last year sort of throwing things at the wall, trying to figure out what I actually wanted to do. When you're publishing patterns, you can either self-publish, which is what a lot of indie designers do. They publish their patterns on Ravelry or Etsy or their own website and sell them directly to consumers. And the other thing that you can do is you can sell patterns to what we call third parties. So magazines, subscription boxes, what else have I worked with? Yarn companies, yarn companies are a big one. And so I decided to try and focus more on the latter route for lots of reasons that I won't go into too much, but it took me a really long time to actually gain some traction because the way that works is that you do a quick write up and you submit some sketches and some swatches and things like that. And then of all the submissions they get, the company selects which ones they want. So I've spent a really long time trying to find my groove with the whole submission process. I had a lot of rejections, which is fine. It was a little heartbreaking, but I knew I really wanted to do it, so I just kept going. And somehow, in late 2020, after all of this time and all of my attempts 
at getting that going, I got a bunch of commissions all at once and I was really excited, but it did mean that the beginning of 2021 was pretty intense. Everyone wanted me to actually finish the patterns by February, somewhere between February and April of 2021. So in that time between when I was commissioned in late 2020 until April of 2021, which is what, four or five months? I, I didn't knit, I designed a shawl, a blanket, a summer top, a little jacket, a full-on jumper, and a scarf. And so that was a lot. <laughs> it was quite a bit. And so this first batch of finished objects is all of those patterns. So I guess I will just walk you through them all now. All right, so the first pattern that I have, or the first finished object that I have, is called the Skipping Shawl. And this was a pattern that I wrote for Infinite Twist, who are a yarn company based out of Singapore. I love this shawl. It was a bit of a dream come true because I've always really loved the idea of gradient cakes and I had just never managed to actually get a hold of one for various reasons. And so when I saw that Infinite Twist were looking for new designs, I jumped on the chance because this is one giant gradient cake. So it's a very large shawl. It was sport weight yarn or five ply yarn. And I just wanted to show the colors off mainly. So it's got this very, very subtle texture. So that's what it looks like. It's just all done with slip stitches and knits and pearls. And yeah, it's a big heart shaped shawl. Pretty simple in terms of construction, just a big triangle. And that was my first design of the year. And then the next thing that I made was the Building Blocks Baby Blanket. Now, this baby blanket is an old pattern of mine. I think I published it back in 2018 or so. It is a mosaic knit. And it was the first pattern that I decided to rewrite into using an Australian yarn. So one of my sort of ongoing projects is to rewrite my self-published patterns into Aussie yarns. So I rewrote the Building Blocks Baby Blanket into using Bendigo Willowen Mills 10 ply cotton. And I don't have the blanket because it's been gifted, but I'll put a picture up here. This was for my niece Philippa. And yeah, it was just really fun. I really do love mosaic knitting. I actually have a full tutorial workshop on how to do mosaic knitting. So if you're interested, I will pop a link to that up here. All right, the next pattern that I have, oh, project, I keep saying pattern, mostly because these are patterns that I wrote. <laughs> but the next project that I have is Queen of Spades. It is a summer top and it was knit from Louise Roberts collection Super Sock. This is the yarn. The colorway is called Anne Boleyn, which is sort of funny actually. I hadn't noticed at the time. <laughs> So the pattern is called Queen of Spades because it has this big spade design here on the side. And the rest of it is just a pretty simple summer top. It's stockinette knit in the round, but it has a couple of little details that I added to try and make sure that it seemed quite finished. I wanted the whole thing to look quite polished. So it has a folded up hem at the bottom and an I-cord edging at the neck, just to make sure that the edges are nice and finished off and don't look just like a plain bind off and cast on. And so that's why it was called Queen of Spades. And I hadn't realized until just now when I was looking at the yarn that the yarn color is called Anne Boleyn. <laughs> so it's also very thematic. I didn't know if I could make this top when I proposed it, <laughs> but I figured I'd take a chance and it actually worked out really well. All of my testers were quite happy with the fit, so I was quite proud of that. Queen of Spades is actually a free pattern, so if you're interested in making it, there is a link to it down below. Sometimes when you write a design for like a yarn company, they actually keep the sample, so part of the contract is that you make the design and a sample. So I don't actually have this shirt anymore, which is why I, I'm not wearing it or I can't show it to you. I'd really love to wear it. But I do have more of the yarn, so I am planning on making one for myself. I just haven't gotten around to it yet this year. So look out next year. It may be on my list of things that I made <laughs> in 2022. The next FO I have is the Travelling Bolero. It is also what I'm wearing. <laughs> I will talk about why I've got two of them later on. 
But this was also a pattern that I designed. It is a design for Ren and Oli sock yarn. And Ren and Oli are a indie dyer out of South Australia. So I think they're based in Adelaide. And yeah, it's a cute little cardigan. I have spoken about this ad nauseum. There is an entire video just on how to make this bolero. So if you're interested, it is once again mosaic knitting because I really do like mosaic knitting. It's just really, guys, if anyone wants to get into color work and you're intimidated by it, just go try mosaic knitting or slip stitch knitting. There are a lot of patterns out for it now because it's become quite popular recently and it's a really good way of getting into color work if it's something that you are interested in but a little intimidated by. Okay, so the next project that I made after that is a big fluffy pink jumper, which I have no photos of, but I do have it here. But this is the second one I made, so we'll talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> it is a pattern that I designed and I sent that sample off to the yarn company. So they have that, which is why I don't have it here. It's a bit of a funny pattern, for lots of reasons, the yarn that the yarn company sent me was a prototype and they decided against actually producing it at the end of the day. So the pattern's a little bit in limbo. I do really love it, but I don't know when it's going to be released or what yarn it's going to be released for. But whenever it is, I will definitely let you know because I really like it. But yeah, it's an entire jumper, a very large one. After that, the next project that I made was a scarf called Confluence. Now, <laughs> it's, a, it's just a funny name. So a confluence is where several rivers meet. And so it was a scarf where I wanted to put in some cables, but I didn't want the whole thing to be super cabled. I thought it would be nice if it was a little bit more relaxing than that. So it's knit in ribbing, but every so often the rib lines start merging and crossing over each other and they form little cabled knots. It's called confluence because, you know, it looks like rivers crossing, but it's also a bit of a personal joke because confluence was the name of a product that I worked on in my old job for a very, very long time. And so I thought it was a cute idea to name a scarf after that too. And it was knit for Knit Crate who are a subscription box based over in the States. They send you mystery yarn once a month and it has a knit pattern and a crochet pattern that you can make out of that yarn. I've been working with them for a couple of years and they're a really great company to work with. I really love writing patterns for them. And I do also have a discount code for them. So if any of you have ever been eyeing off a Knit Crate subscription, you can grab the discount code down below if that's something that you are interested in signing up for. So the yarn is Ordine Wool's Mellow and it is 80% alpaca and 20% tensile. So it's really interesting actually as a yarn. It's quite soft and a little fuzzy because of the alpaca. And yeah, it's just this really cute color with the variegation in it. So, Basically, Confluence was the last of the mad rush of patterns that I had to write. So all of those projects that I've shown so far were made sometime between the start of the year and April. So after I had done all of that, I needed to take a bit of a break from designing my own things. And so I decided to make someone else's pattern because that's always a lot more relaxing than <laughs> writing your own. It is called... Over the Mountains is by Minimalism with Yarn. It does actually have a different name, but the name is a Vietnamese word. And I lived in Vietnam for long enough that I know that I cannot pronounce Vietnamese words to save my life. <laughs> so I will pop the name of it up here on the screen, but it is also called Over the Mountains. And it was knit from Heirloom Merino Magic Chunky. Merino Magic is a yarn that I found after I came home from the States and I really love it. It's a big box yarn. So you can buy it from Lincraft and Spotlight. It's nice to just have a yarn that is actually 100% merino. That's at a little bit of a cheaper price point. 
And they do have some really pretty colors. Embarrassingly enough, I didn't realize this was crochet when I bought it. I'm glad that I learned how to do it because it's good to learn new techniques. But it was a bit of a pain. I think if I was ever to make another one of these, I would just find a simple pattern for just a herringbone stitch and just figure it out. But I am glad that I found the pattern in the first place because I never would have thought to design something like this myself. So even if I can figure out how to do it with knitting, I'm still very appreciative of the designer for coming up with the pillow in the first place. All right, the next project is one of my favorite things that I've knit this year, actually. So this is the Betty Babe dress by Lovely by Lee. And it was knit from Fiddlesticks Grange 10, which is a mix of wool, alpaca, and acrylic. So it makes for this really lovely heathered look and it's got some nice fuzz. So both the heathering and the fuzz are from the alpaca. And I was feeling a little snobby and was almost not going to buy it because it had the acrylic in it. But at the end of the day, it just feels like wool. It also has a tiny bit of Jostad Creek Iron Moor, which I will talk about more later because I have a whole project in it. But I snuck a little bit of yarn into the inside of the collar because this yarn is a little bit itchy because of the alpaca fuzz. So I just wanted to have something right at the neckline. So I put some merino here into the inside just to make sure that it didn't get super itchy around my neck. And it's a nice little surprise that just I know about. <laughs> so I love this dress. It's a really easy pattern to follow. And Amanda, who's the designer, put a whole page of modifications that you can make into the front of the pattern. So if you want to try making a dress, I'd really recommend it because it's 10 ply yarn, so it knits up really quickly and there's lots of help on how you can make adjustments if you want it to fit your body better. Okay, now we are up to tetrominoes. So I think this is, when did I make this? In May? So this was a pattern that I wrote for Knit Picks. And it was a bit of a funny one actually. So once again, it's mosaic knitting because I just love mosaic knitting. <laughs> and it's a nice way to show off what mosaic knitting can do because this color work here is all just from the yarn itself. So this is knit in chroma twist. Why do I always want to say chroma twist? It's not called chroma twist at all. <laughs> this is knit in Knit Picks Chroma Worsted. So the Contrast color is one color. I think it was called Groovy. And then the gray is a separate color. This also is a free pattern, so you can grab it from the Knit Picks website. And again, the link is down below. The next project is called the Shana Shrug. I actually called it Tiny Twist, which I thought it was a cute name. And the reason that it's called Tiny Twist is here's the swatch that I made for it. So it just has this little subtle twist pattern all the way through it. So the edging is done in seed stitch and then the majority of it is done in this little sort of twisted stitch pattern and it just gives it a nice little texture. So it's a big shrug and it was knit from Rowan Cotton Cashmere, which as the name suggests is a cotton and cashmere blend and it was published by I Like Knitting, who are an online magazine in the States. It was actually intentionally designed as a beginner project. So shrugs actually are a really good starting point if you ever want to start garment knitting because they're essentially just a big rectangle that you seam up the sides. Knitting the shrug was pretty intense. I have this bad habit of leaving things to the last minute. And so it was a pretty big project. It used at least a kilometer of yarn and I knit it in the span of maybe a week. And so I was madly knitting away just before we went on holidays. And I really wanted to get it done before we left because I wanted to block it and then give it a chance to dry while we were on holidays because I was sort of coming up to the deadline for when it was due. Again, I got a little bit burnt out because Tetra Minot's and the Shana Shrug were sort of knit back to back in a bit of a rush. So as we were leaving to go to the holiday, I grabbed the ball of Drawstad Creek Iron Law, which I had used on the inside of my Betty Babe dress. And I knew I wanted to make the Claire Beanie by Friday Knits. Because I was in such a rush to grab any project before we left for the holiday, I didn't really pay attention to the gauge and the needles and the yarn and everything. 
So it ended up being a little bit too big. But it worked out okay because my husband saw it and he was like, can you make me one of those? And I realized that he wanted exactly this hat. He wanted the yarn and he wanted the color and he wanted the drape. And I was like, just take the beanie. It's already too big for me. So this is his beanie now. And I may have to make myself one next winter. It actually fits me a little bit better. And then the next project that I have is the Stepping Stones scarf. So this was knit in Abbey Road Bornsby Wool. It's another design that I decided to re-release into an Australian yarn. So Abbey Road is not produced in Australia, but it's an Australian company. I actually did a whole video on the wool itself, so I will link that here. And yeah, it's just a really quick knit. I know it's the middle of summer here right now, but if anyone's in the States and you're looking for a quick palette cleanser after all of your holiday knitting, it's a good one to just sort of pick up and go with. I also have a whole video just on how to make the scarf itself. The stitches are just little twisted stitches. And so I have some tutorials on how to actually do the twisted stitches and stuff. So those are actually all the projects that I made before I started my regular podcast. So everything here from here on out is stuff that I've actually talked about on the podcast. If you're interested in hearing more about them, you can click the links up in the corner. Okay, so this is the big fuzzy jumper that I was talking about that I designed. And I, I really love it. I don't know why, but I never took any photos in it. Well, I do know why. I think I was a little burnt out from all the designing and all the Instagramming and all the marketing that I've been doing for all the patterns that I've been releasing. And I wanted to have something that was just for me. And I had enough of the yarn left over from the design process that I could just knit one for me. So I do have a bit of a crummy photo that I just took as a selfie quickly. So I can show you sort of briefly what it looks like. But I was on a bit of a balloon sleeve kick. So the Betty Babe dress has these big balloon sleeves. This one has even bigger balloon sleeves. <laughs> they are giant. Again, whenever this is released, I will tell you about it because I do really love this pattern. After that, the next thing I made was the Greek cowl. So, you know how I was saying that if you are intimidated by color work, you should try mosaic knitting? It's because I've always been intimidated by color work. But my friend Cam published this pattern and it was too beautiful not to make. So it's called the Greek Cowl. It is by Hand Knit by Cam. The pink is Soft Sock from Down Under Dyer. And the white is called Calico. And it is also from Down Under Dyer, but it's in the Everyday Sock. I think I probably got those the wrong way around. Anyway, I'll put the details up on the screen. The blue is Aracania Itata. And yeah, it was just lovely. I actually made a whole vlog about my sort of like learning how to do color work. So you can take a look at that if you're interested. So still a bit of a process getting the hang of the color work, but it was a pretty good first project to try. The next project I have is the first of two pieces that I am not allowed to show you. <laughs> I will give you a tiny sneak peek. Ta-da! There you go. <laughs> it is a piece that I'm working on with a yarn company. One of the interesting parts about working with third parties is that a lot of them have really long lead times. So this is going to be published in February or March. So I'll let you know when it's out and I will tell you all the details then. Okay, we're getting towards the bottom of the pile. This beanie, if it looks familiar, it's because it is actually the sleeve from the jumper. <laughs> so designing is weird sometimes. It can be very strange. And I got to the point as I was designing the big fluffy jumper where I just made a giant mistake on one of the sleeves. So I just ripped the sleeve off of the jumper and I realized that I could just finish the top off and then fold it up quite a bit and it made for a quite, quite a nice beanie. So here's my cute little beanie that has no pattern at all. But it worked. All right. After my funny beanie, I made a car Beth jumper. So I've had this in my queue for a really, really long time. This is Carbeth 
by Kate Davies Designs. And the reason that I never actually knit it is that it was cropped and I don't love cropped items, but I realized that I have a lot of high-waisted skirts. So I decided that I would finally cast this on and make it quite cropped so I could wear it with my high-waisted things. So it was knit from Bendigo Woolen Mills, one strand of luxury and one strand of tweed, both in eight ply. And you hold the yarns together, and so it came up with this really lovely, subtle, sort of mild effect. And I like the little twiggy pops. My daughter calls them polka dots, which I think is super cute. Okay, after my car beth, I made a gracefully shawl. This is a pattern by my friend Jessica, who is Snicker Doodle Knits, and she is an indie designer based out of the States. And the yarn is from Dying to Knit. It's on her luscious sock base, and she is an indie designer who's based in Perth. I never used her yarn before, but I am obsessed. I'm on a bit of a pastel kick at the moment, so these colours are just gorgeous. I really love all the different textures that are in this shawl, and all of them are quite simple to do. I will admit I don't love bobbles, but I did them and they look pretty cool in the project overall, so I don't mind having them in there. I liked the yarn so much that I actually ended up using the ends of it to make earrings. <laughs> so I didn't want to waste any of it because it is so beautiful. And my friend Jessica from Jess Knits and Sews, who is also an Aussie podcaster, she suggested making the scrap yarn of projects that you love into little earrings. And I'm looking forward to wearing them together because <laughs> I think it'll be really cute. So after my shawl was done, the next project that I finished was this copy of my traveling bolero. The sizing on this one just wasn't really where I wanted it to be. And so I decided to make a second one just to make sure that it was right for the pattern. I knew that I had enough of the gray to make a second bolero, but I wasn't sure if I had enough of the purple. So what I ended up doing is that the original sample used to be edged in the cinnabar color from Ren and Ollie. So I took that off and I used it for this sample here. And then I ended up re-knitting the edging on this one with the Anne Boylin from Queen of Spades. So this one I wear, I've worn it a lot. I throw it in my handbag because it's nice having an extra layer that you can just throw on if you need it. And the second sample is actually going to go live in a yarn store in the hopes that it'll get a couple more eyes on it and people will want to take a look and buy it. Well, the pattern, not the sample. <laughs> After my bolero was done, the next project that I worked on was the Entwine Beanie. This is a pattern by Waddle and Wool, who is a designer and podcaster who lives in Perth. The yarn is by Carola Down Under in 100% Superwash Merino and Louis Lo La Mohair Silk Lace, and they're held together. I also thought it would be a good opportunity to try mohair because it's something that I've been shying away from a little bit, just because I was a bit skeptical of it for various reasons. So I go into a lot of that in a video that I made about trying mohair for the first time. So if you'd like to see or hear my opinions about it, then I will link to the video up here in the corner. But the beanie itself is lovely. The pattern is gorgeous and it's free actually. So you should go check it out. So the next thing that I made was a set of dishcloths. So these are actually a very large swatch for a blanket that I'm making. So the four-way stop blanket was a pattern that I released back in maybe 2017 or 2018. And I was never super happy with how it turned out because the border on it doesn't really sit flat. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to revisit the pattern. And also, it was a good chance to rewrite it into an Aussie yarn. So I reached out to Bendigo Woolen Mills, and when they sent me the yarn for the Building Blocks blanket, they also sent me the yarn for the four-way stop blanket, but I needed to test out how to actually make the border of it sit flat. So I made a couple of small prototype squares, and we now use them as dishcloths. So we use them so much that I don't know where the other one is. <laughs> I think it's in the wash. I'd always been a little skeptical of dishcloths because I couldn't understand how you could keep them clean, but it's been fine actually. I'm glad that I managed to do something useful with my little prototype squares for the baby blanket, and I'm pretty happy with the shaping now. So I will go ahead and actually knit the 
final blanket and write the pattern up early next year. This next project is going to be really quick. It's the second of the two projects I'm not allowed to tell you much about. So this is what it looks like. <laughs> it is very large. <laughs> I was debating whether I should tell you about the things that I'm not allowed to talk about, but I did figure this would warrant a mention just because it did take a whole two and a half weeks. And for reference, it was 775 meters of very light fingering weight yarn on 3.25 millimeter needles. And I did it all in two and a half weeks. It was a project, guys. It's also the most complicated design I've ever made. I didn't realize how complicated it was going to be when I went into it. So I'm very proud of myself. And I will tell you all about it when it comes out in sometime mid to late next year. And the last three finished objects I have for the year are my Christmas stockings. So they came out so nicely. So Georgie and Pip are my nieces and my sister asked for one in shades of red and one in shades of green. And then Amelia is my daughter. And I showed her all the colors and told her how many reds and greens she was allowed to pick. And so she picked out the ones that she wanted. And this is her stocking. The pattern is called the Triangle and Reindeer Stockings. It was published by Jenny Williams. So these are all Bendigo Woolen Mills. Some of the colors are luxury and some of them are classic and they're eight ply. And there is one extra color of Lincroft Cozy Wool. I have talked about these ad nauseum in my last podcast episode. So I'll put a link up to that here if you'd like to see more details about them but the main two things that I wanted to say are that for one I put some lining in it so I cracked up my sewing machine and put some lining in the stockings also they are color work so I'm really glad that I did the Grigga cowl because I think that it finally got me over my fear of color work and I definitely have got the hang of the color work now I think my tension is still not entirely the same between the color work and the stockinette. I think that's just something that I'll have to adjust for if I ever go ahead and make a whole color work jumper. But other than that, I'm really proud of these. And that's it. That is all of the knitting that I did in 2021. So one thing I do want to say is that I've had a very productive year. This is a lot. And sometimes I get people telling me, oh, I don't knit as quickly as you, but I really don't think that's a problem. If you want to learn how to knit faster just for yourself, then that's fine. But if you see people knitting up a storm, don't feel like you should too. Keep in mind that this is my job. So I'm not just knitting on the couch in the nights. I'm actually spending days and days doing this during the daytime as well. And even then, I'm not the most prolific knitter. I've seen some other podcasters who, oof, I do not know how they do what they do. <laughs> but it's been a strange year. It really has at the end of the day. And so I'm really glad that I've had all of my knitting to get me through it. And this is when I started my YouTube channel. So I'm really glad to have met you all. And I'm so glad you've all stuck around and are still watching. So if you are looking for me elsewhere on the internet, I am at Oliphant Cat on Instagram and on Ravelry and basically anywhere you can find someone with a username. I teach in Sydney and I also tech edit. So if you ever want to learn a technique or if you want some help with a design, just reach out to me because I do do private lessons. Just to let you know, I'm taking a break over the next few weeks. So the next podcast episode will be up in the middle of January, not the start like normal. So I hope you had a really good Christmas if that's something that you celebrate and you have a really good New Year's. If you are bored during the downtime and want something to watch while you're knitting, all of my projects from the second half of the year, I go into a lot of details in my podcast episodes. So you can find links to all of those in this playlist here. And if you're new and you'd like to support me, you can subscribe using this button up here. And I will see you next year. Happy knitting.